Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make your very own tassels. This is not really a crochet tutorial but you can have the option of using a crochet hook for one section if you really want to. Now before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on none of one of my crochet tutorials or patterns again. Now, one of the really important questions that gets asked a lot is how to secure your tassel onto your project. So if you are making your springtime spiral bunting, I'm gonna be showing you how to attach this to the bottom of your triangles to create a really fun look. So the materials that we're gonna be using today is three different colors of Aran or worsted weight yarn, which is a medium size four. You can of course use one single color or use whatever weight yarn you need. You might just need to adjust the number of wraps we're going to make to create our tassel to get the look that you want. If you are making your tassels for your spiral springtime bunting, you're going to need about 15 meters across all three colors. So just five meters per color to create those tassels. If you wanna make the extra long ones, you're gonna need about 30 meters, so 10 meters per color. Alongside the yarn, you are of course going to need a pair of scissors. I'm going to get some more sharp scissors than these ones because I've been struggling to cut already. You're either going to need a crochet needle or a darning needle so that we can secure the top of our tassels. And the secret weapon is a hard back book. You can of course use cardboard, but you need to make sure that it's very sturdy and won't bend so that you can ensure that all your lengths of yarn are the same size. If you want an estimation of what size your tassels are going to work out at, I can give you these examples. So this book measures eight inch across the longest side, which is what I use to make this lovely long tassel here. And the finished size, once we've cinched in, is about seven inches, because as you can see, there are some shorter lengths in there. And of course, this tassel was made working the other side of the book, which is about five and a half inches long and gave me a finished tassel of between five and four and a half inches. So once you've got the piece of card or a book that gets the length that you want to achieve for your tassels, I'm going to be making this short one with you today. We are ready to go. With your hardback book, it's important to make sure that you have a ridge down the center or along the edge so that you can easily secure all the lengths of yarn in one go. Some books have a ridge down the edge here and that makes it really easy to cut as well, but it really does help if you have something to push your hook through or your darning needle through to secure all the lengths at the same time. Now I'm gonna be using three different colors, but to save time, I'm gonna wrap them all at the same time. So I have my balls of yarn off to the center there. And I'm gonna start by making them roughly the same starting length. So all the ends roughly the same. And then I'm going to just kind of hold them against my book, making sure that where the middle of that tassel is going to be, I can get my needle or my hook underneath. For this smaller tassel here, I did a total number of wraps of 15 of each color. So that would be a total of 45 wraps if you're making it in one color. And for the larger tassel, I did a total wrap of 20. So it meant that I have 20 wraps per color or a total wrap of 60. And when I say wrap, I simply mean bringing it over the length of your book. So that counts as one wrap because we've only got half a wrap here. <laughs> so that was one, two, three, That's number 14 and number 15. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to try and tuck those in there for a moment so they don't go too wildly loose. And then I'm going to fasten off what's attached to the ball. And we need to cut a length to secure the top. So for this length, I'm going to make about one foot or 12 inches roughly of yarn because this is what I'm going to use to secure this tassel to my project as well. So you can either thread your needle with your yarn and then I'm just going to push my needle all the way through and this is why you need this little space, it makes it much easier just to bring it all the way through. I'm going to put that that way so you can see what I'm doing. Just got these roughly the same length and then I'm going to 
Secure this tightly with a knot. Not so tight that it breaks the yarn, but tight enough that it stays in one place. I'm going to do a double knot and we're going to double knot again once we've done this next section. Make sure they've come through because it's not overly tight. Make sure you haven't tra trapped any yarn in your knots there. It's not overly tight, but it's more tight than it was. Once we've secured the top of our tassel, we can move to the bottom and snip along all the other yarn. This is why you need sharp scissors, because mine aren't very sharp. And before I let go, I'm going to grab one side of my tassel just to keep those separated. Move my book out of the way. And this is our halfway through our tassel. Now I've already made a double knot at the top here. I'm going to make it so that I can make another double knot on the other side of my tassel just by bringing that end through the middle of my tassel there, ready to tie another knot just to really keep it secure and tight. So essentially we have our strands of our tassel. You can see you've got some longer ones and some shorter ones. That's just where we started and finished. And from here, we need to cut another length of yarn. Again, I'm going to use the same color purple. And this is where we are going to make, it looks like a doll's head to me. So we need to decide how long you want that to be. On the longer tassel, I have made the head of the tassel a little bit longer but it's entirely up to you. So I'm simply going to place, oh, let's move this all out of the way so it's nice and clear. So I've got my cut strand here. So I'm just gonna place my tassel over the top roughly where I want it. And then I'm just, why are these yarns so short? And then once you're happy with where it's going to land, you can simply tie another double knot. Now I'm going to change this yarn because that is too short. I don't know why I've made that strand so short. I want it to be as long, a little bit longer than one of the strands in my tassel because once we have tied this knot, we want these to be hidden inside our, because we're going to hide these strands inside our tassel itself. So before you absolutely cinch it, check that you're happy with where it's sitting and then pull your knot tight. And I'm going to flip mine over, which is not a good idea. Uh, making sure I've got the right ends in the right place. Ready to tie another knot on the other side of my tassel. So once I've done that other knot, I can tie a secondary knot to secure. And that is as simple as that. Now you can see that there's a bit of a mishap there. So you can adjust your knot and the length of your tassel as soon as you've secured it, just to make sure that it looks even pretty much all the way around. I'm gonna pull that bit up a bit. There we go. So it looks nice and full all the way around. If you've got too much on one side, you can have a little tug on that and make it all nice and neat. You can see that you can barely see those knots. If you feel that they are really obvious, you can just grab one of the strands and with your darning needle, pop the end onto your needle and poke it through the head of your tassel and it will pull the knot into the middle like that and it can't be seen anymore. The final thing to do is to play hairdresser. Run your tassel through your fingers until you find your shortest bits. And we're just gonna trim off this excess here. I'm gonna watch what I'm doing because I don't wanna cut myself. And there you have your completed tassel. If you are finding that your strands are a little bit wiggly like this one here and you don't like that look, you can simply 
gently, if it's, well, if you've made it with acrylic, you can just waft it gently in front of a steam iron or a steamer. Make sure you don't burn yourself whilst you're doing that. Once you have your completed tassel and you're ready to attach it to your project, you're going to need your darning needle and thread both strands onto into your darning needle. We're going to attach this to our project working through, in this case we have, um, we don't have a chain one space or anything, so we're just going through that first stitch at the bottom of our springtime spiral bunting flag. That's a lot of words. And just bring those ends all the way through. Goodness, I wish you'd made them the same length. That would have helped. Once they're pulled through, you want to make that nice and tight right up to your project. Or you can leave a space if you want your um, tassel to really move. Once you've got it through that first stitch, we're going to weave back through the next stitch on our project. Doesn't matter what project you're making, just weave back through the next stitch and make sure that it's securely on your tassel and weave back through again through that first stitch that you went through. That's going to make sure that your tassel remains in place and we can then do the same by weaving back through the next stitch or chain space and repeat the process again and then we can go back through again into that stitch. So it's kind of weaving the tail of our tassel through working over three stitches. We're not adding any extra bulk to our tassel um, and secure your end. And I'm gonna make you make a knot. I know a lot of people don't like making knots in their crochet, but I don't want mine coming off. You don't have to. I'm gonna bring it through and feed my needle through to secure a knot at the back of my project so that my tassel is not loose. Now I can weave these ends in as normal and that completes my flag. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial on learning how to make your own tassels to add to your crochet and knit projects. Make sure that you've hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And I will see you in the next video.